to all of my cats. Hey guys, I'm gonna try to get through this video without my cat like knocking my phone or my coffee out of my hands because he's very curious about both of them. He has the tendency to want to drink out of our glasses, so I have to watch him like a hawk when I have coffee anywhere nearby. He's not a very good listener either. Anyway, I asked you guys on Instagram for some questions because I felt like doing another Q&A. It's been just a couple of months now and you guys responded with so many questions. So I'm gonna attempt to answer as many as I possibly can without making this a half hour long video. The first question is from Owen Griffin and she asks, did you notice any interesting or funny differences between dating a French man and dating American men? Um, one thing that you've probably heard a lot if you watch other videos of, you know, French and American relationships, but it definitely applies. It's that when we first started dating, there was this concept in my head, because it's, you know, the American concept, and it's very common in other countries as well, but dating. I mean, of course, going on dates and that sort of thing, of course, French people do that too, but the whole concept of you can go on dates and, you know, you can sort of start seeing someone, but you're not actually dating steadily, like you're not boyfriend and girlfriend yet. So we had that whole sort of awkward thing where I had to just ask him, do you want to be my boyfriend? Do you want me to be your girlfriend? <laughs> Starry-eyed reader asks, favorite movies? Um, Lord of the Rings, hands down. And outside of sort of the, the sci-fi fantasy genre, I'm gonna go Tangled. Jardin des Tuileries says, how realistic is it to hope to move to a European country and teach English? It seems like almost everyone in the Western Euro European countries already can speak English, so there wouldn't be much work. That's actually not true at all. I think a lot of countries do require it from a fairly young age, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the population really learns it. The tricky thing about teaching English in West Western Europe specifically is because there's very high demand and you really can't get a visa very easily. You might be able to get some sort of temporary visa depending on what country you come from. Sometimes there are like partnerships with certain Western European countries, but as a general rule, you might be able to get a temporary visa, but coming over here and, and wanting to move here and live here, it's very, very hard to get a working visa. So that can be pretty tricky, but of course there are different programs and stuff you can go through. I personally haven't done any of them, so I'm not the best person to ask, but they definitely do exist. And there is definitely demand. That EcoGirl91 asks, what advice would you tell 22 year old you. I've never thought about this question before. I think I would tell myself to prioritize and to chill out about things that aren't really a big deal and to really focus on the things that are long term because that's something I feel like I did fail at. Well, not completely fail at, but I didn't do my best when I was in my early 20s. I was doing a lot and I was very motivated, but I feel like my motivations and my efforts were sometimes a bit misguided. So I think if I just, if I thought about it harder, it's not that experience has told me they're misguided. I think I knew at the time they weren't really where I needed to be focusing but I kind of just made the choice anyway because either it was easier or because social pressures or just a, a number of things influenced it. But I think I would just tell myself to prioritize and yeah, to only focus on the things that really matter. What's your favorite French word or expression at the moment? This is one that I learned a little bit ago because I do a lot of translation about cats related things, but now that I have a cat, it kind of just reminded me of it. In French, you have of course the word chat for cat, but you also have a little nickname for cat, which is matou and I just find it so cute. Busy Fiction asks, what place do you most want to travel to next? Germany. I actually talked about this in my New Year's resolutions video and I'll link it up there if you wanna watch it. Joyful asks, is it really difficult to find an apartment in Paris and which kind of papers do you need? Yes, the answer is just, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's yes, it's really hard to find an apartment. You need a ton of different papers. Um, I actually still wanna do that video that I mentioned a while ago with Jay and Cheryl where we talk about sort of tips on finding an apartment, you know, our advice, our experiences. And we have talked about that, we just haven't had time for it yet. So let me know in the comments if that's still an interest and I will definitely do that. Truth or Dare asks, who are some of your favorite French vloggers and what are your, some of your favorite French TV shows and movies? As far as vloggers, um, one person that I followed for a very long time is I, th I think she might be the most subscribed to female French vlogger, but don't quote me on that. Um, that's Enjoy Phoenix, and she also has a vlogging channel, Enjoy Vlogging. I don't really watch a ton of beauty content, especially not in English, but I found her, I think she might have been the first French vlogger I found, and she has really fun videos. She speaks pretty clearly. She vlogs all the time. She does vlog every day in April. I think she did it, she does every year Vlogmas. She does multiple sessions in the year where she does it every day, and it was just so helpful for me. And I've watched her for so long now, you know, you kind of have that friendship feeling with her. So she's probably my favorite French vlogger. As far as TV shows and movies, um, I just started a series recently, which is very weird, but very fun. And that's um, Eroko, I think is what it's called. Hero Core, basically. And movies, my favorite is probably Le Dîner du Con. Eagle Lives asks, can you please post more pics or videos of your cat? An insane amount of my Instagram is cats, and honestly, I could go for more. I agree with you, and I have posted a few more pictures since you left this comment, and I'm definitely gonna post more very soon. That's just a guarantee. My camera roll is basically just my cat right now, so I will definitely post more. 
Fire Glitter 410 asks, where are you from? Like, which state are you from? I am from Illinois, so right in the middle of the United States. How was meeting the in-laws for the first time? Did you speak English or French? My husband's family does not speak English, actually, so if I'm ever with them or around them, hands down, I will be speaking French. That is the only language we have to communicate in. It was a bit stressful, especially because of that, because the first time I met them, I didn't speak any French. So it was literally just me telling my husband something and he would tell them something and vice versa. It was very awkward. Dinners were very awkward. It's much, much better now though, of course. Mania Storm asks, what about French cheese? I mean, do you like them? I love French cheese. I still can't do very, very strong cheeses. I'm working on it slowly but surely, but my taste, like my palate is just not at all accustomed to that. Anne Hale 64 asks, what is the most difficult part of writing for you? This is something that I've actually been experiencing a lot now that I'm at sort of the end of my book right now, and it's making all of the details come together, tying all the strings together towards the end. And I think this is something that a lot of writers struggle with. It's very generic, but honestly, it doesn't matter how good your plot idea is. It doesn't matter how good your writing style is. If you can't make things wrap up and make sense at the end, then it's not only frustrating for the potential readers, but it's very frustrating as a writer. Lil Genie 75 asked several questions here, actually. Um, I'm just gonna answer a couple that I haven't already answered. How many siblings do I have? I have two, I am the middle child. And have I always been a cat person? I'm not a cat person, actually. <laughs> I love cats, I love dogs, I love hamsters, I love rabbits, I love guinea pigs. I just love animals in general. I grew up with a dog. I had three hamsters over the course of my childhood slash teen years, and now I have a cat. Emma Woodrow asks, do you enjoy language learning? Are you looking to learn more? I definitely am. Um, I'm gonna take it nice and easy because now that I'm living in France, French really has to be the priority. But next on my list is German. Lavender Hay asks a couple of things. Um, one about how I started my YouTube channel. I kind of just, I'd watched YouTube for a very long time and finally I just decided on a sort of topic I wanted to talk about, which was originally books, and I just started. I borrowed my dad's camera, I just set up a little place in the corner of my room, and I just filmed a couple things. And the first couple I filmed, I don't think I ever posted, but then I just started posting them. It's like, what the heck? Let's see what people think of that. She also asks about meeting French in-laws, and yeah, like I said before, my experience was not the best, just because it was very awkward, but I would approach it like meeting any in-laws, really. Be polite, be nice, talk to your partner and ask them what sorts of things might go over well, what sorts of things might go over badly. Mickey Med asks, are there any shows or movies you recommend for someone who is intermediate in French? Um, actually, the ones that I mentioned before, Le Dîner de Con for movies, and El Record that I'm watching right now, I feel like both of those would be pretty manageable for someone who's intermediate French, especially Le Dîner de Con because it was based on a play and I feel like the structure is very methodical and you know well thought out, very organized, and it's not kind of like, I don't know, a fantasy movie that might jump all over the place and introduce weird words and concepts. It's very straightforward and it's really fun. What's one thing that you have to have with you when you travel? Okay, I'm gonna assume that we're not talking about like phone or camera or things like that, because that's pretty basic. Lip balm would have to be my answer. I cannot go anywhere actually, not just traveling, but I can't go anywhere without lip balm. The Adventurous Wallflower asks, I think I remember you saying you received your master's in creative writing in England. If I'm correct, how did you find yourself studying over there and what was the process like? Um, basically, I had for a very long time wanted to move to the UK, at least temporarily, and I really wanted to study there. I studied literature for my undergrad in the US, and British literature has always been my favorite. I really wanted to dive deeper into that, and I thought, you know, what better way to do that than by moving to the UK and studying there. The process itself was a little bit complicated, but it wasn't so bad because I found a site online, and if I can remember the, the name of it, I will link it in the description below, but it was basically a site that helped you out with your application process. So I had a contact there, and she helped me just, you know, figure out where I wanted to apply. They had like a list of schools that worked with them, and it had to be schools that worked with that program. But she would help me with the applications, she would help me with kind of every step of the way, she gave me visa advice. So overall it went really smoothly. Fancy and Nancy asks, how did you find your new apartment and do you already feel at home? It is wonderful. I love my new apartment. There are definitely problems with it. It's not perfect. No place in Paris is because most of these buildings are very old, but overall it's very nice. I have plenty of space. I think my cat seems to like it. He's asleep right now. What is the job hunting process like in France for non-French? Is it hard to find a work visa? Um, were you able to find a lot of English-speaking jobs? A lot of questions here about jobs. 
Um, it is quite challenging, or at least it can be. Normally you have to be very skilled in something and a company has to want to hire you and they have to prove to the government that nobody else in the EU can do the job. It's very possible, it's just, you know, much more challenging, obviously. For all the other questions, I will just direct you to my working abroad video, which I will link up there. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Specifically, do you happen to know your Myers-Briggs personality type? Actually, I saw this question when you posted it, so I took the, qu the quiz again because it's been a long time. And apparently, according to the quiz, I am ENFJT. I don't know what that means. So I'm more extroverted than introverted. I'm more intuitive than observant, apparently. I'm more feeling than thinking. I'm more judging than prospecting as far as tactics and how I plan things. And um, I am more turbulent than assertive which is my identity, how confident we are in our abilities and decisions. Apparently I'm quite turbulent. I feel like most of that makes a lot of sense. Um, there were some that were kind of 60-40, so I, it's not really like a hard right or left there. Why did you go for a cat instead of a dog? This is a very good question, and it's one that I actually was planning on addressing in the video that I'm gonna make about my cat at some point. My husband and I did consider both because we were both kind of just animal people. We love dogs, we love cats. But um, what kind of made the decision for us is Paris. You are very lucky in this city if you happen to have an apartment or a house with a garden. And when you have a dog, obviously you have to let them out to you know do their business. And in Paris, unless you're again, very lucky and, and have a garden or live right next to a park, it's kind of difficult for the dog. You have to take them out and walk them in the dirty streets and have them, you know, do their business on little patches of grass they may find on the side of the road. It's just, it's not ideal. On top of that, there's the issue of the apartment size, which it would be okay, I think, for a small dog, but definitely not a medium size or a big dog. A cat, however, um, doesn't need to go outside to do their business. Um, you can make use of vertical space with the cat. Overall, just our lifestyle at the moment just definitely fit much better with a cat. Tara O'Donnell asks, what books would you recommend for someone learning from French. I did do a whole video about reading in a foreign language and in that one I talked a lot about the books that I started with and what I recommend and why I recommend certain things but um, I will just give you one title right now that I think you should definitely start with and that's Le Petit Prince, The Little Prince. It's what I'm pretty sure every French student uh, reads when they're in class but if you haven't read it already it's definitely a great place to start. Chris asks, now that you're reading The Silmarillion do you think Peter Jackson should adapt it or do you think all the, the LOTR and Hobbit films should be done for now? Um, I don't know. The Hobbit movies were fun and everything, you know, it was fun to get back into the, the Lord of the Rings universe, and you know I'm the biggest fan of Lord of the Rings, but I was, I was disappointed. I, I was like everybody else, pretty much. So when it comes to adapting the Silmarillion, um, already that book would be a challenge to adapt because it's, you know, even if you just took the Silmarillion part of the book and you just ignored all the other short stories in there, it's challenging. It's basically kind of like a biblical account of all these things that happened in this universe that he created, but it's very factual and it's interesting, but I'm not really sure about its potential as a movie. You'd have to take a lot of liberties, but maybe with less detail to work with, he could do something great. I don't know. I'm gonna go with, I would prefer he didn't, but if he did, I would happily go to the theater and see it. Those are all the questions I'm gonna be answering today. Thank you guys so, so, so much for sending all of your questions. I hope this video is not super long, but I just wanted to answer as many as I possibly, possibly could. I know after this video, I'm probably gonna get a lot of comments on the cat because for any of you guys who are subscribed but don't follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you may not know that I have the cat yet, even though I did mention I was getting one in my last video but um, I am gonna be doing a video featuring him. I will show you him a little bit more. You can see him on Instagram already. The link for my Instagram is in the description if you wanna check that out. But I am gonna do a video completely about him and the day we got him and you know what's going on and how it's going and everything. But I just wanna give him a little bit more time to, yeah, to adjust to his new home. Speaking of which, I think he's waking up right now. So he's probably gonna get really hyper in about two minutes. So I'm gonna go play with him and run off some of his energy and I will talk to you guys later.